Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the first episode of Respect the Connect podcast. I'm your host, Johnny James. I'm here with my brother, Leonard Harris. I'm here with my brother, Jay Trav. My brother, Leonard, is a motherfucking published author, screenwriter, just all around badass motherfucker, you know what I mean? And my brother, Jay, right here, is my producer. Man, he's been, me and him been working together for fucking years. He don't just produce. Yes. Though he don't just produce this motherfucker will build you a house, you know what I mean? You put him in front of it, <laughs> he'll get that shit popping. So uh what's popping, fellas? How the fuck you guys doing? Good man, chilling. Chilling, bro. Chill. It's been a minute. Chilling, bro. It's hey, been how, too long. Yeah. How was y'all Thanksgiving, dog? It was good. I got to see family. Um I ate like a motherfucker. And bro. uh yeah, I can't complain. Bro. What what food got messed up? Oh man, you know what? Man, we're just gonna jump right into the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't blame I can't blame nobody because, you know, I'm still getting over the Rona. You uh-huh. know what I mean? So my taste and my smell still kind of fucked up, right? The turkey tasted like shit. Damn. <laughs> mom, I'm sorry. My mom, hey, my mom's cooking is is fire, right? Oh, fire, yeah. fire. But the turkey, ever since COVID, like like some shit tastes the same, right? It went back to normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. but sometimes shit tastes like like I don't know, dried orange pills. Ooh. Damn, and so, you still get that? You hey, still still, bro. And it's yeah. been fucking what, 3 months? Wow. Bro, so That's crazy, bro. So like low key, my mom's turkey tasted like fucking orange pills. I love you, moms. <laughs> don't don't watch this episode. <laughs> hey, but everything else was everything right. else was fire. I, I'm gonna turn okay. the tables on Leonard. Who fucked up the food in your Thanksgiving, Leonard? Oh man, my mom ruined the mac and cheese. Oh, much love to you, mom. I know you said it yourself. It's not your best work. <laughs> you said that. You said that. So come on. <laughs> That's funny, we can be bro. honest here. Hey, so I think we're going to have to put the spotlight on Jay, bro. Oh, Who fucked shit. up the food, Jay? Shit, mom's cooked it, bro. So uh, she fucked she it up. Fucked, she mom's fu- cooked it, <laughs> she so cooked she it. fucked no, it up. Mom's is a good cook, too, though, bro. She she cooks Italian, though, all the time, bro. Oh, so y'all had a big-ass yeah, Thanksgiving we, it was, Italian yeah, style. It was, yeah, bro. I mean, we had the turkey. You got to keep it. Keep yeah. it okay, so it. since you guys, you know what I mean, you guys are Italian down here in New Mex, you feel me? What's different? What's different about how y'all like do it versus how we do it? You guys still throw red chili on everything, or oh, not really? Bro, I do. Okay. Mo- most of, most of the fam doesn't doesn't really care for the hot for the really? chili, bro. Hey, yeah, like, they'll, they'll get chili, but I'll put that shit on everything. Bro. That's your fucking New Mexican coming now, hey, dog. Hey man, hey, and it's you can't you can't go wrong with it on anything, bro. So I'm still a little salty though. You still ain't throwing moms under the bus. You mean everything was perfect? Is that what you're trying to oh, tell me? Oh, 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 oh. Well, see what happened. Me and Leonard, hey, uh, me and Leonard uh, we were moms. honest. Hey, we threw moms <laughs> right under the bus. Get right? under the, this dude's like, listen, get under moms, the radios, mom. Hey, my hey, mom, she be listening to podcasts all the time. This shit might pop up in her. That's suggestion. hilarious. That's hilarious. No, if I had to say anything, bro, now the turkey was on point, but the stuffing was a little. Oh, was a little. Uh, Damn, dog. You know. That's just disrespectful, bro. Ooh. The stuffing is special, Jay. So, man, the we threw our moms. <laughs> we threw our moms under the bus, but you just went headshot with moms, oh, bro. bro. I'm bro. Just, the stuffing. That's funny as hell. Hey, mm. crazy dog. You know what though? It was. I think it was dope this Thanksgiving, bro, because these past fucking hundred months, it feels like bro. since <laughs> since lockdown or since our two week lockdown. Yeah. It was just nice to like have a Thanksgiving that felt like it was Fuck. like actual Thanksgiving. Two weeks. Yeah. You feel what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it, it felt normal. Yeah. Kind of versus how last year's. Well, Thanksgiving shit. Yeah, was. last year we had to be outside, bro. I don't know if you guys. Oh were. man, we y'all did outside? Thanksgiving outside. Nah. We tried it, bro, and it was like, eh. nah. Yeah. Nah, nah, man. Well, yeah, nah, nah, I, was, I, was, I just stayed inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thanksgiving ain't that say. special. This is the first episode of Respect the Connect, and. Um, I'm I'm happy as fuck that I'm sitting here next to y'all because we've done so much work together between us three that the audience probably don't even don't even know. Like Leonard, for those of y'all out there that don't know, this motherfucker directed my first video, right? Ooh, yeah. I need yeah. a dollar. Yeah. It was yeah. it was him and Chad. Yeah. You know, like I said, Leonard does everything. He's 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 a published author, but he's a screenwriter. He, he man, he set up these see these cameras that are back here. I was, you know, doing my thing a little bit, but Leonard's like, "Hey, hold up. You get out the way real quick. <laughs> let me let me show you how the fuck it's done." Um, we've done a lot of work together between us three. So, being able to do this first episode with y'all is is special to me. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate bro. it. Salud. 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 Salud.
So since uh, we're all creatives out here in New Mexico, I'm going to throw, throw it to Leonard first. All right. What does it feel like, like being a creative out here in New Mexico, you know, we don't really have an industry out here mm. for creatives. Mm. We don't really have industries out here, period, right? But being an artist out here is is different than other places, I feel, because it, it's harder to get noticed out here. How do you feel about that, Leonard? Uh, you know, I 100% agree um, when it comes to the whole concept about uh, getting noticed, getting found. Um, one of the things that I really latched on to, um, cause I'm in the film industry. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the film industry and everything that's set up in Los Angeles, that kind of like, as soon as someone gets off the bus, there's some energy that's sucking them into the system. Yep. We don't have that. No, you can't just land in Albuquerque and there's someone looking for you, trying to help you out, trying yep. to get Real something talk. going, popping yep. an off or anything. So what I really had to embrace was if we're the pioneers out mm -hmm. here, especially for the film industry and the independent side out here, we really have to build it from scratch. Yep. And we really have to try to build something that's similar to what they got going on in other places, because in other places, these systems have already been built and designed and they they're work. already in place. Yeah, they yeah. work. Yeah. No, we don't no, have any of that. There's no reason to to reinvent the wheel if the right. wheel works. You know yeah. what I mean? We just we could do throw, something similar. We could throw some rims. <laughs> <laughs> throw some D's on it. We could throw some that. rims on this one for some 13s. You know what I mean? Down here in the mess. Right. I, I feel that 100%, bro. It's, it's you, you reminded me um, of something that my boy Raw, Raw Music, if, for those of you guys down here in New oh, Mexico, yeah. if you didn't know what Raw Music was, this ain't. There ain't enough time in this podcast for me to explain how important raw music was to our music scene yeah, down here, right? Better know raw music. But exactly. But my boy Raw Ivan, shout out to, to Raw Music. He one time he told me, I'll never forget it. He was like, We don't, you know, they talk about paving roads out here, right? Like, like we paved our own road, we paved our own road. Man, there ain't even no roads out here. We ain't paving our roads. We're fucking completely creating them from scratch yeah they're dirt roads there's no there's there's not even a dirt road created yeah we had to get out here and create the fucking roads and then start paving the motherfuckers because like you said there's there's no person to go like okay cool like i'm an actor right bet so i, I want to get in this movie where do i go like now it's a, a little easier to, to find that but i mean just five years ago it was almost fucking impossible right you know yeah, right so and then uh, on the flip side jay Jay makes beats, you know what I mean? Jay's a producer. He records artists down here. What do you think, Jay? Is it is it harder f to be a producer here in New Mexico, you feel, or is it just different? No, I, I honestly, bro, like being a producer is like not everybody has a budget yeah. to like, you know what I mean? So Y'all step your budget game up. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and then with YouTube, you know what I mean? You could just grab whatever beat off of YouTube. So mm -hmm. it's tough, bro. Like being a producer is tough. But being a producer from out here where there's not that where there's not that scene, like uh -huh. I always, I don't know, I always, like, we used to always bring it up about, like, how Texas, you know, how their movement came together for their music scene. Yep. And it sounds like cliche because it's so, like, it happened so long ago, but we can't grip that. Like, everybody yeah. wants to be the one to, to put, to put you know, New Mexico or Albuquerque or wherever it may be, Santa Fe on the map. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but we can't do it just with one with one no. with one, one artist, artist one yeah. group, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, there's, a, there's so much talent out here, bro, but... There's not that scene, like that structure. I, I fucking completely agree, bro. And I feel like it's not even just the fact that there's not like a structure in the scene because there's, like you said, there's so much fucking talent. Like, I don't think people understand mm -hmm. how much talent we have out here in, in Burke. Not just in, not just in the Duke, in New Mexico, period. Like, there's a music scene down here, down here that just hasn't been properly formatted together right and and i right. think yep. bringing up texas is a good point because texas was out here really really making fucking moves for years like years and years you're going back ghetto boys and and we're going back <laughs> you know talk. what i mean oh yeah but it, it seems like i don't even know like when was it like 2003 maybe whenever slim thug and paul wall and chameleon there and mike jones when when the whole scene like started coming together like that they really started to bubble and they yep. popped off on mtv yep. because it wasn't just the fact that they came together right it was also the fact that they had an original sound mm -hmm. they sounded 
like Texas, right. Right? right? And I feel like as a New Mexico artist, me, you know, I mean, in, in general, we've lacked for a long time, not anymore because now things have changed, but for a long time, we lacked a New Mexico sound, right? right. Like we took pieces from, from things that were popping and things that were trendy and popular and we tried to make them ours, but it just, it just didn't feel like New Mexico. Over the past five years, I'd go back again, we've started to formulate a sound, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you, so. when you start listening now to artists down here, like you listen to it, it's like, oh shit, homies from Burke for sure. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That's some Albuquerque shit. Or like homies definitely from Santa Fe, like those are Santa Fe bars. Okay, so let me, let me interject. When you say that, uh -huh. for the people out there who don't know, can you give them some names and some examples? Um, okay, man, putting me right on the spot. My bad. <laughs> so, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so I would say, um, I'm going to go back first, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to go backwards. So my brother Romero, I always got to give my brother Romero from Click I Won his yep, fucking flowers, Romero. right? Because I feel like he was at the foundation of forming what New Mexico could sound like, uh -huh. right? Um, he was talking about 505 and he was talking about things that we experienced down here, right? In, in, in his context. But now, you know what I mean? You got, you got the homie fucking crown, right? The crown out here. Like, man, if you listen to the crown, like you definitely get the fucking Burke vibe 100%, right? Mm -hmm. You got yep. the other homie, Notorious T, same fucking situation. You listen to him and it feels like New Mexico, right? Right, and shit, I'm gonna throw myself in the mix. You listen to Johnny Motherfucking James, <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna know what the fuck it sounds like no to be out here in New Mexico. And I feel like yep. that was. Um, I know I'm leaving a whole bunch of people out, but I'm already kind of yeah, fucking. It's never lifted. shade. It's never shade. Love. I, I it's got none love. but love for all my fucking artists down here. My 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 big homie fucking Gambino, my brother boy Dirt, um, the homie Boozle. Fucking, there's, there's too many. My homeboy, Toxic. There's too many out here yep. to fucking name. But I guess what my point is is there was a point in our, uh, in our like musical evolution down here where we lacked uh, a sound of New Mexico, mm -hmm. and I feel like over the past four to five years we found it, mm -hmm. and yep. now yeah. it's fucking go time. You yeah, know what I mean, now it's fucking go time. And to, to what Jay was saying, it's it's been harder for people. Like we haven't come together down here, right? It's changing. It's it, like there's there's more love down here than there ever was, and it's yeah. easier. Like you know, I mean, you do a show. We we do a show at fucking Leo's or whatever the fuck, and everybody would meet each other, and it's the same shit. Oh, bet brother, your set was dope. We need to do a record together. Da 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 da. And Man, you ain't doing a record. We ain't never do a record. Everybody <laughs> said no, we're gonna do a that record. Doesn't <laughs> happen. It never no, it fucking happens, happen. right? But sure. now, man, that that shit that shit's happening. We're doing records together, and we're moving forward, and it's fucking it's beautiful to see. I love it as it as is, an bro. artist. It really is. That's been down here doing this shit for fucking years, man. Since Q, to see Q. our progress and to see us moving forward as a unit, as a collective with a sound that that is New Mexico. Psh, that shit's fucking better than dope, fuck, bro. bro. Yo, shit, sure, let's do a fuck. quick little toast to Q, bro. Sure. Hey, yeah, let's do a quick yeah. little toast to Q. Any artist that's been R. down R. here, bro. you know what I mean, yeah. for years been doing their thing. This Indeed. shit all started at Q Productions. Q. When we didn't have a place to record, Q was recording our fucking wild asses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, bro, a couple artists that I know actually went to Q before, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, Wait, he was like he was came, he was the me. only one that would record us. Like none of us. Now it's easy. Everything is fucking home studio. Home, yeah. yeah, you know. What I mean, yeah, you yeah. watch a few YouTube videos, and psh, man, you're fucking ready to go. <laughs> Back then, though, fuck, bro, I was recording myself. Like, man, I'm gonna show my age, but fuck it. <laughs> I would like I had I had a little the little Sony boombox, right? The one with the little fucking speakers that like slid out. Yeah, yeah, move, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right with them yep. little wires. Yep. Crazy little yep. bitches, the little like two inch tweeters on the top of them motherfuckers, the bass boost. The yep. extra bass, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the, the bass boost. That's hilarious, same same bro. thing with Walkmans. Like the fucking bass boost, bro. That's Get hilarious. the fuck out of here. There was, no, there was no bass boost. Another fucking That's worthless funny, piece bro. of shit was the anti skip on the Walkmans, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was not anti skip. Bro, and I'd had that shit in my pocket at, at in high school. Shit, bro. 
if I you had I had to like change the whole walk so it didn't yeah. skip, bro. <laughs> and then and then you scratch the fuck out of your new bone thugs, bro. Oh, like, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, anti skip. That was That's that was a failed funny, experiment, bro. bro. But the how I started, bro, when I first started recording music, right? Like, I didn't have a studio. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I had no idea song structure, none of that bullshit, right? I had a fucking a tape recorder. And I had a fucking Sony boombox with the little removable speakers, right? So what I would do is I didn't even have beats. So I would go to the end of a record, right? And you know how there's usually like about like four bars of mm. blank, yeah. of blank <laughs> beat, yeah. right? So what I would do is I'd play that blank beat and I'd turn on my fucking recorder and I'd hit record at the same time and I'd let it run it and then I'd stop it, right? Yeah. And then I'd start it over and I'd do the same thing for like about two minutes. And loop so I'd loop it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I didn't know yeah. what the fuck I was doing, but if you listen closer, you could hear the like click and the stop, but it was enough yeah. for me to ride the beat, right? Yeah. So once I had made my beat, then I would fucking- I made, would, made my once beat. Once I had made, <laughs> I stole my beat. Hey, I knew the producer was gonna talk shit. <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah. bro. Um, once I had made my beat, Jay, <laughs> I would throw another blank fucking cassette into my fucking boombox and I or into the recorder and I'd play the beat and then I'd rap right there in the middle. So that was the first that was how I first made my first songs. Mm. And they were That's fucking crazy. horrible. <laughs> All I was talking about was fuck this, fuck that, suck my dick. It was every fucking cuss word that I could possibly say. But I was like Fucking ten, bro. Yeah. Some shit like that. Yeah, bro. I was like hoping my moms wouldn't hear. I'm like, yeah, suck my dick, you dumb bitch. Oh, that shit rhymed. That shit was hard. That shit was hard. You know what I mean? That's funny, um, but I don't even know why, what, where I was going with that shit. But oh, Q, we're talking about Q. So for artists down here, we didn't really have, you know, no one to record us. And Q was like, Psh, man, $20 an hour. Come on. I'll record all you guys' wild ass shit. <laughs> he had people going through there that had beef with each other, man. They shot up Q's fucking studio. Damn, and Q was just bro, this fucking hippie crazy. dude that would sit there at his computer talking shit and tell you how you shouldn't fucking pay taxes. That's what who Q was. <laughs> and since he was, his home base was here in the Duke, man, yeah. his studio got shot up like three times. Oof. Bro. I know, dog. I mm, know. Damn. Crazy, bro. It's it's a trip, man. Um, so Leonard, I'm gonna yeah. toss it over to you since you brought up the movie industry down here. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel like that's changed um, New Mexico? Like, do you feel like it's it's brought more people from out of state opportunities, mm -hmm. or do you feel like it's brought a lot of opportunities for the locals down here? Good question. Uh, you know what it. it in my opinion, it's been a mixed bag. Uh -huh. um, I think there are some opportunities that are available. A lot, quite a few opportunities that are available to local people. Um, if they want to take them, right, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you gotta want to work. Yeah, yeah you gotta right want to work. It's work. Yeah. Um, but um, one of the things that some of my friends and I talk quite a bit about is uh, the independent scene here. And once you get above the line mm -hmm. when it comes to filmmaking, um, it's a little thinner space as far as opportunities are concerned mm -hmm. so if you're a writer producer uh you want to be like the the top of the uh call sheet actor you want to be you know number one number two on the call sheet uh -huh. that sort of thing a director cinematographer or something it's just okay. like a lot of people have had to leave this place and go to la or wherever and it's kind of weird because they'll get out there and then they'll end up getting jobs back here. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But they have to be out there to get the bona fides, to get the, the stamp on them oh, to man. say, okay, you're qualified or whatnot. So a lot of the opportunities in New Mexico right now are below the line, which is uh -huh. fantastic. However, I'm okay with it because I know that what's happening is there's a, a, a change in perception. Uh -huh. People are starting to identify the film industry with New Mexico and it's sticking. Uh -huh. And that's something that I wasn't sure was going to happen when they first were um, introducing the incentives and things like that. And it seems like every day they're bringing a new movie or a new right. TV show right. down here to New Mexico. Yeah. And everybody's excited about it. Everybody wants that industry to continue to stay here. Yeah. For so sure. what it's, ultimately in my mind is going to end up happening is eventually there will be private money available mm -hmm. that people will start investing in above the line people here mm -hmm. so they can get their ideas out here and not have to go elsewhere to, you know to chase their dreams because a lot of times they chase their dreams somewhere else and, and then it back. sends them right back here yeah for work yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. but for work yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so 
what I'm looking at now and what I'm seeing is just this gradual improvement uh-huh. in the opportunity and the scale of the whole thing. And I think over time with the other business investments that are coming in here and we see with the economics of California is kind of pushing people out of that state. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a lot more competition when it comes to filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And I think that's good. I think that's excellent because the more people who are here who can do this stuff, the more opportunities, the more love, the more, you know, shots and cracks at it that we're going to have. So For sure. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that's I mean, I, I completely agree. It's it's I mean, it's the same with with what we were saying earlier, with there not being like a, a legit industry out here. It sucks because sometimes, you know, there's no lack for talent. But sometimes we have to take our talents to South Beach, right. like LeBron, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, because you don't you don't get noticed, or there's there's not enough. Like there's only so much you can do without eyes on you, right? You're gonna get burnt out. Yeah. Like you you got all these ideas, and us as creatives, we we you know I know all both you guys can totally agree with this. There's only so much you can do without you know art is created for other people yeah. right like yep. it's created for us at first but the process of getting it out is to affect other people emotionally in mm-hmm. some way shape or form right and if nobody's seeing what you're creating it gets it really fucking gets hard to keep pushing fucking forward it yeah. really does yeah yeah i agree i think um in a way that initial creative process Mm -hmm. is like an exchange between you and your creator or wherever you draw your inspiration from. But when you capture it, the purpose of that thing that you've now captured is to exchange that same emotion with someone else. Because like people will read my books now and I wrote them years ago yep. and they're like, yo, dude, yeah. that meant so much to me. And you know, cause we were doing the audio yep. book and stuff and it's like, I, yep. some of this stuff I don't even remember I wrote. So like I said, Leonard can write his motherfucking ass off. Like for those of y'all don't know, tell yeah, them, tell them definitely. the books that you have available definitely. right now for them to grab Leonard. Okay. Uh, Bulldog and flower. Number one, we got an audio book coming out yes. with that. We're going to talk about that in yeah. a second. Bulldog and flower, uh, white crown Vic and AT kid. And where can they get them? Uh, all are available on Amazon, or you can uh, go to my website, www.lenwords.com. And I know you motherfuckers are on Amazon all the motherfucking time. <laughs> I know y'all are on Amazon, so y'all need to go to Amazon and grab Leonard's books. He's a beast. I'm, he's he's yeah. a very, very, very talented author, for real. These two motherfuckers right here are venturing off into uncharted waters something doing something that neither of them have done before and it's sounding super 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 dope they're recording an audiobook for one of leonard's books what book is it bulldog and flower bulldog and flower Mm -hmm. what's it like being being your first time recording an audiobook jay what was it was it different like were you like like kind of freaked out to do it or was it just easy to make the transition no it's it was it was a little different bro because you know you're focusing on you're focusing on dialogue, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So like the background noise, if there's a car or some shit driving by, you mm-hmm. hear it, it'll pick it up. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't have like a beat or just music accompanying it. Well, actually this audio book does. Oh, <laughs> that's, shit. That's okay. so it's a little about different. It. Okay. Than okay. It's different. Okay. Okay. It's different. Okay. But yeah. but but the but the main part is is di- is the dialogue. He's narrating it, you know what I mean? And it, and then we we have the music and and some sound. I don't want to give away too much, bro, but we have extra things to accent it that just makes it like, whoa, it, you, you're in it. You're yeah. in the book. It's an immersive experience. So are you guys done? Almost. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Still in the works. Still we got, in the works. What is yeah. it? Two cha- a chapter and a half. It's like almost, yeah, chapter yeah. and a half. What about, one and a half chapters. What about left. you, Leonard? Was it fucking weird, like, going in there and reading your book that you wrote? But like, Because I know if you're doing an audio book, you can't just be in there monotone like, Todd told okay. his sister to fuck off. <laughs> like, you got to put some energy into what you're okay. saying, right? So when I write, I imagine the experience of the character. So that's what I'm trying to capture. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for me to kind of play act. And I'm, I'm, I've am i known Jay for years, so mm-hmm. I'm comfortable around him so I can loosen up and, and relax. My problem is I'm not a performer and mm-hmm. I don't love my voice on tape. So I'm still acclimating myself to, to that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But... Beyond that, like it's been a it's been amazing. And 
man, when he gets creative and starts adding shit, oh, it yeah. just it oh, sweetens yeah. it yep. to a whole nother level, man. Yep. And I just it's it's been a great experience. I love collaborating, especially with this guy. So being creative and and collaborating is fucking definitely the best part, I feel like. You get you like sometimes when 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 you get to a certain point and you're working on something, you can hit a wall. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Especially yeah, if, if you're sure. you're alone. But having another set of eyes and another set of ears gives you a different perspective. Yeah. Right. And one thing I could say from personal experience, I know exactly what you're talking about. When I first started working with Jay, it's his ideas after the fact. Like you see something one way and then Jay will be like, oh no, hold up. Let me like put a little flip right here on it. And it's like, oh fuck. You can it, do that? Yeah, it changes, oh. <laughs> changes a, like it changes the whole record, right? Like like I remember the first couple of records that I, you know, I, I worked with Jay. It's been fucking years now. And you're fucking old, bro. Dude, I'm you're old, fucking man. getting old, know, brother. Bro. Fucking older than fuck. That's hilarious. It's been a while. This is me and Jay been working, but the first, you know, couple of sessions. When you work with someone new, you never really know how it's going to go, right? It's like, this is either going to be great or fucking horrible. <laughs> waste right. of damn time. Yeah, waste of fucking time. The song I just made was trash. <laughs> but with me and Jay, I don't know if he'll agree. He's probably going to be like, nah, this motherfucker shit. I didn't even want to record this motherfucker. But <laughs> with me and Jay, it was like instant. It was like instantly I was like, okay, bet we're on we're on the same type of vibe right here. And he was able to to see my vision of what I wanted to do and give his own little twist on it and take it to another place that I didn't even see before. Yeah. So that's yeah. what's dope about no, working with this I fucking guy right here. I appreciate here in the you, bro. I appreciate you. Nah, appreciate man, both of yeah. you guys. Yeah. No, man, and it's 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 cool, bro, because because when you do with like even co like collaborations like I, I I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast but like features and collabs there's only like really mainly done in hip hop like yeah you know right. like in, yeah. in rock and roll a little bit but it's mainly you know like that's what it is and but like yeah bro what's popping with the Garth Brooks and George Strait <laughs> feature dog how come we never got a Garth Brooks George Strait bro, banger bro I, yeah we need if, a double album from them too bro, <laughs> bro. if y'all are watching this shit y'all need to collab already dog right, you know what I mean right. Yeah, dog. Not to cut you off. But, no, you're good. You're good. You know. You're good. But no, man. It's like, but but when you're able to like, you know, like show it. Like I make beats. It's right. I, I don't rap. You know what I mean. So he's like, lying. This motherfucker's got a mixtape dropping. Oh, That's why he wanted to be on the podcast. Oh, he's on this, bro. I'm gonna drop it. You'll probably never ever hear me other than this on a mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, like, so I make beats, and it's like, so I don't rap. I don't rap to them. You know, once I name them, then then I move on to the next, and then these guys come through. And then what they do is just crazy because like me writing like I like I I can't write, but like these these fools come through and and he actually doesn't even write he does it all he he actually it's all up in the dome so, but then then they, get my they come in on real quick exactly bro <laughs> then they do it then they lace it and then after that I'm able to live with it for like a day or whatever or even while we're recording sometimes I'll be able to make edits and drops and echoes and all that stuff but. It's just it, it's dope to be able to express like I'm expressing a little bit too, and then mm -hmm. it also adds to what what he's saying to what you're saying, mm -hmm. and it all just kind of comes together, bro. And it's a it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah music it's... is just a beautiful thing, bro. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, music, for saving my life. I was a fucking <laughs> degenerate, talk. fucking idiot running the streets, and <laughs> you saved me. That Real sounds talk. funny, That's but funny. It, I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's the truth too. Talking about other podcasts since you brought up fucking Joe Rogan, who's seen the Kanye drink champs. Who's seen it? Who's seen it? Who's seen it? I've seen it. Yep. I've seen it. Okay. Who, who am I going to go to first? I think I'm going to go to Leonard first yeah, because, bro, yeah. because yeah. Leonard was just telling me how he has been more on a Donda vibe versus mm -hmm. CLB. Ooh, you yeah. know what I mean? All so right. I'm going to turn to Leonard and well, how'd you feel about the Kanye drink champs? I know there's a lot to unpack here. This is probably like four podcasts worth of bro. shit, but give me your, your initial thoughts on it. I mean... I ain't got too much to say about it, except i am always been a Kanye supporter. Yes. I've always understood what he's trying to accomplish. Yes. Obviously, we know he's not a perfect artist. He's not a perfect human being. But None of us are. Exactly. But the work that he's doing, I think, is very important yep. and needs to be paid attention to. And it should not be clowned. Y'all no. should be giving him flowers, giving him respect. I know his home is a wreck. But... He's a good dude, and he's really got your best interest at heart with the music he's putting out because he's trying to tell you guys something really, really important right now. 
And I, I'm going to have to uh, agree in a sense there with what you're saying, bro. Like, I've always been a, a Kanye fan, bro. Like, have I always agreed with him? Fuck no. <laughs> Has he said some wild ass shit that I just don't see eye to eye with? Fuck yeah. Is he imperfect? Who the fuck is perfect, bro? But the thing with Kanye, bro, and it's this is the first time in years that it's been this apparent, is Kanye is Kanye, dog. Like, he's a, a beautiful disaster, bro. He's got <laughs> billions of dollars, but he still sits down and he talks to us like we're talking to each other right right now, yeah. right? He, he, gives you, he gives you the fact that, like, you can see that he's a fucking genius. He'll say shit and you're like, there was times when Noriega was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but it sounds dope, so I'm just going right, to let you keep right. going, right? So Kanye's a, a fucking genius, bro. But then he'll say... He'll say some shit that's like super arrogant. He'll say some shit that's like super fucking jealous, which is the human experience, right. bro. Like we are not fucking perfect. We're far from it. So to have a legend like Kanye on his level still be able to communicate like that, I feel is it, it's fucking unheard of, bro. It's unseen. Yeah. Like you don't get that from somebody that's on Kanye's level, right? Yeah. And you shouldn't want to fucking, like, I, I can't stand this shit with people just wanting to hear from people that they agree with. I can't fucking stand <laughs> that shit, bro. Why would you only want to hear the opinions of people you agree with completely? <laughs> right. That's never going to get us anywhere. It's like, we're True. never going to move forward True. just living in a fucking echo chamber, yeah. right? So people are, you know, like, like I said, there's been shit that Kanye has said that I do not stand behind 100%. But, at, like you said, at the end of the day, he does seem to have a bigger picture involved. He does seem to have people's better interests in certain aspects of what he's trying to do at, you know, in his heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the core of what he's trying to do. Yeah. And I think, I think bringing spirituality into hip hop is something that it's always been underneath it. Mm -hmm. It's always been the core. You talk about artists like Scarface, you talk about artists like Tupac, you talk, yep. you talk about these artists that really touch you deeply. The reason why is because there is something in their spirit that you're connecting with. Mm -hmm. And he's attempting in his own way to do that. I mean, he's had, you know, moments with Jesus Walks and some of the other earlier yeah, records yeah. Yeah. where he's kind of delved into, you know, his 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 faith and all that. Yep. But what he's doing now with coming out with the album completely edited mm -hmm. and he picked up a bunch of young bucks who are who are in the game now and he got them on his page which yep. was for me the most surprising thing because I didn't even know what the guest list was on the album I just listened to the album and it felt cohesive yep. then I went back and looked at the guest list and I'm like how in the world did you get all these different types of artists to put something together that all sounds like one idea in one yep. concept it's, it was incredible to me I, he's a fucking musical genius but yeah, there's no bro. way around really? it That's really what, it comes whether, to whether you agree with 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 his views on life whether you agree like there's no arguing the fact that kanye has put out <laughs> fucking classics and been attached to classics yeah you know yeah. what i mean so for me that that's what i took from it the most like i've always been a kanye fan bro like always like since jump i remember you know when 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 he dropped his first project and you know jesus walks hit and through the wire hit through the wire instantly got my attention i'm like who the fuck is this mm -hmm. and then i got the album and i, I, I like See, that's the thing with music, bro. Like, is it's, it's timeless. It's one of those things in our life, you know, music and movies can transport you back to the feeling you had, to to where you were when you heard it. Like, instantly. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, fucking yeah, time bro. travel, right? So when I think about about when I became a Kanye fan, I remember I got the album, Through, through the Wire was, the, man, MTV Jams was pumping that shit. Again, I'm showing my age, MTV Jams. <laughs> MTV Jams was pumping that shit constantly. So I got the album, brought it back, was listening to it at the pad, and I remember when I knew for sure I was a fan was, uh, I think it was record track number five, Spaceship. I've uh, been working, working this grave ship, and I ain't made shit. Yeah. Bruh, mm -hmm. bruh. <laughs> That was it for me, dog. Yes, I was inst I was instantly, dog, instantly hooked, bro. And and like I said, you might not agree with everything he says. You might not agree with with everything that he does. But 
why the fuck do you want people around you that you just agree with? Yeah. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Right? Right? Yeah. You should be thinking for I disagree for yourself. with most of the shit Jay's been doing with himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, just, I, I had to turn on Jay real quick. Matter of fact, what do, you, what do you think, Jay? I know you watched it. I told you we were going to probably talk about it. How do you, how'd yeah. you feel about where, where Kanye went in this drink champs? It was long as fuck. That shit was... Yeah, it was like two, three hours, yeah, something like you that. Know, it was yeah. long. It was crazy. Yeah. I watched it twice. You pretty much said everything, bro. You didn't yeah. stop talking, bro. Man, this motherfucker oh, talking. Nah, no, nah, it was uh, Kanye's Kanye, bro. You just gotta, you, you know, like there's like you said, bro. There was times where he had like valid points, mm-hmm. and then he got super arrogant, where he's like, "Oh, I need five rapper. I need five different people with five different styles, with with mm-hmm. different, you know, to battle me." One, you know, because they asked him about the <laughs> right, verses, right, right, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's yeah. like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. hey, you know what part fucked me up, bro? I was laughing so hard. When he talked about um, getting everybody in on the group chat. Oh, and he was like, I got more money than every motherfucker in this. (laughs) I was done, bro. I was fucking. Hey, I was, yeah, I was laughing my ass off, dog. But the reason I wanted to turn to you for the question, though, is because you're a fucking producer, Jay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's like, like, when you first heard Kanye, like, where were you at? Like, like, what did, what did, Cause he changed shit, bro. He came in no the doubt. game. He no came doubt. in the game at a time when things were like one way, and he's like, oh, er, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on." Wait. One point though, he stole Dre's drums. Oh, oh, Ooh. Dre. Hey, he hey. said it himself. Hey, Damn. you know what? Do, what do they say? If you're gonna, if you're gonna steal, steal from the the best. Hey, amen <laughs> to that. If you're gonna steal, steal from the greats, right? Hey, amen still, to that. Funny, <laughs> so, at, from a producer standpoint, none of the other, none of the other stuff that's attached to Kanye. Um, when you heard him, it was probably like right around the time when you were really like starting to get into producing, right? It was mm-hmm. around that time. Yeah, definitely, bro. So I know you grew up on Three Six Mafia. We know that's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> right? But when you heard Kanye, how did you feel as a producer? Like that, what what was he bringing to the game, bro? Well, the sound, bro. His sound was just so big. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, like a movie kind of. Like the drums. I guess maybe we have to thank Dre for the <laughs> drums. Yeah, you do, but, <laughs> but, no, but like like the Salute drums. Dre. <laughs> all, all his, you know, like the samples, bro. Like the the sample game is just out of hand. Like I sample a little bit, bro. But these guys are like, tsh, they know what the fuck. They know exactly how to do it, bro. And mm-hmm. and when I heard, yeah, when I heard like what the shit he was doing, the album that really I was like, this dude is out of hand is my Dark Twisted Fantasy. Oh, bro. oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah. yeah. That's, bro, the, the production yeah, on no, that, I was on. like, dog, that's that's game changing. This, yeah. is, this is this is kind of where I need to be going more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was he dropped that yeah. a little later on. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, but, but that shit, dog, you got to go to that one. Like, oh, that's, bro, that's one of those records that people in hip hop, dog, that's a forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's up dog. there. That's got to be in like the top ten greatest. Well, yeah, one of those tracks. Right? The the whole track is like this crazy filter, bro. It's like this crazy. It's like distorted, but it's his verse, and it's almost like they just grab like oh, words and, then, and phrases, and it's jumping mm-hmm. back and forth. It's panning and it's between. Panning. The fu- yeah. Oh yeah, what yeah. record is that? Yeah, I, I that's can't my think. bitch. It, hey, yeah, I think that is it, bro. Yeah. That, that, shit's that whole crazy. yeah, I was like, bro, that shit is dope, and I even looked it up on YouTube how they did that, Yo, like, yeah, in Pro Tools, yeah, oh yeah, that was, that was epic, bro. And see, that's where that I was, was game left. changing. That's where I was left at it. Like, like I said, bro, um, I've always been a Kanye fan. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'm probably gonna always be a Kanye fan. I was left thinking, man, he's still. He's still that same dude. Yeah. Like yeah. he still is out here like wildin'. Like he'll he'll give it to you unfucking filtered. Like and for me, bro, as an artist growing up, those were always my favorite kind of artists. Right. Right. That's right. why I, I I gravitated towards Nirvana, right? Kurt mm-hmm. Cobain. Like, yep. I'll never forget an interview um that, that Nirvana did. I, it was like MTV fucking like 93 or some shit 92 i don't know the year whatever but it was like spring break or some shit when mtv did all that shit and they were interviewing the nirvana and like you know what i'm saying they were like the the drummer and the and the, the bass guitar they were excited they were talking to mtv like it was nothing and kurt was just sitting back with his fucking shades on and they turned to <laughs> kurt and they're like hey kurt so what what don't you like about you know this whole process about being a famous musician and he looked right in the camera and he's like i fucking hate this shit I hate talking to you. I hate talking to you motherfuckers. I wish I could just make music. And as a kid, I was like, man, that that's the energy right there. Because he was himself. Right. Like, he's, real, he's a bro. huge fucking star, bro. And he was just... 
fuck the cameras, yeah. fuck the interviews, fuck the makeup, and fuck the filters. Back before there was filters back then, he was like, <laughs> fuck it. This is me. This is what you get. That's why I, I, Pac is up in my fucking tops list. You know what I mean? Yep. M was the same way. M's yeah. still the same way. Right. M's yep. still out here saying and doing whatever the fuck he wants to. Yeah. Right? And that's why I fuck with Dave Chappelle. We'll, we'll jump into Dave Chappelle, too. That's Oof. another artist. Right? Like, like, art is art. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what 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 fucking bus you take to get your art out, whether it's comedy, whether it's it's acting, whether it's writing, whether it's rapping or whatever it is. Art is all connected in some way. Whatever the source of energy is that creates art that comes from us artists, it comes from the same fucking source. Right. right? No doubt. So Dave Chappelle's another one. He's unapologetically Dave Chappelle, bro. bro. Point blank, period. Go. You That's it. Go. Fact. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. And I, bro, like, yeah, facts. There's yeah. no way around it. No negotiating. No. <laughs> and like I said, whether you agree, like, you're not supposed to agree with everything that everybody says. You're not supposed to have the same exact opinion as everybody else. You know what it makes me think of? And, you know, I'm a fucking, I'm a dad. I got four kids. So I've been watching SpongeBob forever right <laughs> so there's an episode of spongebob i know people out there are gonna probably remember it jay maybe not because jay ain't no, got no kids no you, uh, unless you'd be watching spongebob <laughs> no jay ain't no, watching SpongeBob. I barely even watch TV. I'm all jay's out of the conversation <laughs> yeah, leonard leonard go. might might recognize this episode so there's an episode <laughs> of spongebob where spongebob has to be like, like I, I can't even remember exactly how it happens but he becomes like a regular person mm. and they round out all his edges <laughs> and he's he's like he's like super polished yeah and he's just like oh hey today's great and just really bland and really monotone and just bullshit right, right. just bullshit bullshit but it reminds me of that why the fuck would you want a whole bunch of fucking rounded edges no like no opinion scared to say what the fuck they want to say people around you you shouldn't. You shouldn't. I don't trust people who don't think for themselves. Straight once I once perfect, I realize yeah. Yeah. once I yeah. realize that you are an automaton or a bot or you don't think for yourself, I can only give you so much time yep. and attention because you're not you're not contributing anything new. I want to be challenged on my ideas. I yep. want people to push me further. And if you don't want that, if you just want to be comfortable, then you're not my type of people. 100%. It's just all it is. 100%. Whether, like I said, like, whether you agree with it or not, like, I feel like so many people nowadays just want to live in an echo chamber, right? right? They want to shout out what they believe and they want the answer to come back exactly yeah. <laughs> what they believe. <laughs> right. 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 Like, like they just they just want right. they just yeah. want to live in an echo chamber and it's yeah. like you're just sitting there jacking yourself off in front of a mirror. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, have you ever jacked off His in front of a mirror? Point. This dude's analogies. Hey, have you ever He's jacked got... off in front of a mirror, Jay? I can't say I have, bro. Don't nah. fucking lie, bro. <laughs> in front you guys, of a mirror? You guys mean to tell me <laughs> I'm the only... mirror a mirror. Hey. <laughs> Mirror, right. mirror, nah, okay. Y'all can't let me Not be the like, only person yeah. in front of a mirror. Of Come on, dog. Hey, just in bro, in the mirror. I had bro. to see what it looked like, dog. You know what I mean? I'll be in the bathroom, just like okay. But it wasn't. Fu- <laughs> I just see hey, what it looked my like. point. My point is <laughs> right. is it wasn't cool, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. It, it looks. Right. It looks you just didn't as, do it twice. Nah, it looks just as bad as you would think it would yeah, look. Jacking off in front of a mirror bro. because you're like, yep, this is me. Jacking Jack off in front of a mirror. <laughs> is this what my face looks like? Damn. Oh, bro. And, and you know, you know, when we be like fucking, or I'm not even fucking, just I guarantee, you know, no one is their best self when they're jacking off. Yeah. That's right. not your best no. version. You're, you're not crazy you're, fucking hey, faces. You're not bro. you're not vibrating yeah, so. on your highest <laughs> level here, right. brother. Right. That's not God mode. No, dog. Right. That is not, that, that's demon time. Bro. You are on demon time. Right? Yeah, that's so gross. you know you're in the mirror. I don't even know how oh yeah, bro. You know in the mirror. Yeah, you're in the mirror, you're looking at yourself. This shit's wild, dog. Like and I was I, the shame that you feel, <laughs> right? The shame. Go because, into it. Yeah. You, Go into you, it. You on the couch, speak on it. Dog. You know what I mean? That so that's that's bro. what I mean, though. Like, it's like jacking off in front of a mirror, dog. It's like loving your own posts 
on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck are you doing, dog? You need to have other people's opinions, dog. You need Definitely. to have other people's perspectives because I guarantee you, you are not right 100% of the time. Probably not even 45% of the fucking time. Right. So right. for me, like in, in this day and age and how things are like moving forward, it just kind of pisses me off that people are so fast to accept people in their lives that just agree with everything they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? I, I prefer difficult conversations. So do yeah. I, dog. That's the only I, I want you yep. to make me defend my thoughts. And yep. if you challenge me and, and change my mind... I'll be better for it. Yeah. yeah. You, you know? shouldn't you shouldn't hold on to like a perspective and an ideology so tight that you can't see um anything else. Right. right? I'm not trying right. to get too deep into fucking philosophy and no, shit. No, but, no. Hey, Plato's allegory of the cave, y'all look that shit up, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna get too deep in that, but that's what that like you yeah. you can't you can't get so fixated on one perspective that you don't realize all the shit that's going on around you yep. because yeah, right, there's so much going on around you. Yeah. So if you're just fixated on one ideology or one frame of thought, you're going to miss most of the shit that's going yeah. on out here. You're, it's an infinite reality, people. Infinite. You're limiting it by limiting yourself. You're just looking through a fucking people. Oh, yeah. You're looking through a people. You're just Come jacking on. off in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just jacking off and in the mirror. Gross, and it's gross, okay? It's fucking gross. Stop it. Stop, Stop it. And jacking it off back to that, bro. in a mirror. Take it from me. It's shameful. <laughs> you know, hey, you know that shame you feel, right? When you're on like the, I don't know, 20th page of Pornhub? Because the first, the first 20 of them just not didn't either. do it, yeah, right? <laughs> and you're on the 20th page. You're about... I don't know, 30 minutes in, right? Wherever you are, <laughs> just doing bad. Yeah. Doing bad on Demon Time. <laughs> just bad for yourself. And and it's over. It's a wrap, right? And the shit you were watching is still playing. <laughs> and you're just like, ugh. Yeah, this is gross. <laughs> what the fuck what the is fuck? wrong with me? That's These hilarious, people. Ugh. Like, really? That's someone's daughter, bro. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dog? Like, <laughs> And then you think to yourself, what the fuck am I doing? Mm -hmm. What the fuck what they're doing? I'm the yeah. one watching this I'm shit. I'm over here. I'm on page 20 of Pornhub. Damn. How did I come to this? Yeah. How did we get here? Pornhub. Yeah. But then add cool. that to the fact that you're looking in the mirror. Yeah, no. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's shameful activities. Yeah. And Your ego is out of bro. control. Yes. Demon time. <laughs> Demon time. Exactly. Demon time. That's funny. It's funny. Um, Shay, yeah. Hey, pass me that crown. Bro. Hey, crown mm -hmm. vanilla or what? Why not? Yeah. Why not? So yeah, man. Um, I've been I've been thinking about doing this fucking podcast for a while, um, but like I've I've told you for years, dog, and, and I know you know we hit a couple of speed bumps because of this fucking last. What was it? Twenty months? Feels no, like what, five years. It was like three weeks ago, oh, right? No, three, it's been, it was been two, week, two weeks to flatten the there curve. You go, bro, bro, hey, it's SpongeBob again. Three, <laughs> two weeks later. <laughs> Like, dog, like, it's been, for, bro. And then bro. And now every day is a new fucking variant, dog. The Rona has started. more variants than there is strains of fucking cannabis on the shelves, bro. Indeed. So Indeed. it's been a long time. Too much. It's been too long, right? So we're, it's crazy because two years ago now almost, fuck, bro. Two yeah. years, dog. Yeah, no. Two fucking years. We were talking about starting this two years ago. And, um... It just, I told Leonard before I told Jay too, that I don't want to do a podcast just because everybody's doing a fucking podcast, right? Because everybody seems like everybody and their fucking mom and their auntie and all their primos and they fucking are their tias and tios all have a podcast. I didn't want to do it unless it made sense. And, and we could be consistent and we could give quality material, yeah. right? And talk about things that other people aren't really talking about, perspectives that other people don't have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... Our perspective coming fucking from New Mexico is mad different than anybody's perspective that's out there right now. Like, completely. Because most of the motherfuckers that are out there right now don't even know we're a state, yeah. Leonard. Yeah. They don't even know we're a There's state. A New yeah. Mexico? Bro, yeah. I've said this before and I'm completely <laughs> convinced of it. Anybody outside of the, the, anybody outside of the New Mexican border is shown a different map 
in elementary school. <laughs> bro, could, bro, it's a different map, dog. We're, we're a part of Mexico. Can Brother, it's a different map. It's a <laughs> different <laughs> map, yep. bro. I'm convinced. That's it's a crazy. fucking conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theorists out there on YouTube, bro. y'all look this shit up. It's a conspiracy theory <laughs> against New Mexicans. I feel blindsided. This shit ain't it. Because anybody outside of New Mexico does not think we are a state. If you guys under do you guys do don't understand how many times I've had people be like damn you speak great english like whoa oh, how'd bro. you get a green card it's like motherfucker i'm from america <laughs> i'm from new mexico it's a part of the motherfucking united states and i've gotten it from people in colorado y'all are right above us how the fuck do you guys know not that dumb. we are not down here That's right crazy, so we have a different perspective and i feel like i wanted it was time because the audience started asking for it so it was time to step forward with a podcast that is able to show that perspective bro because nobody else is going to show it unless we do i guess yep yeah so i want to thank you all for tuning in to the first episode of respect the connect i want to thank my brother jay trav i want to thank my brother leonard harris until next time i appreciate every single one of y'all peace 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 salute